Take your swords and turn to Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1. Now I'm going to ask some interactive questions, okay? So interactive means that you need to respond, all right? That means you need to respond back to me, all right? It's, not a, it's a conversation, if you would, between me and you. Uh, there's no wrong answers. Uh, I want you to just speak, uh, you know, what you think, okay? How do we know? Um, how do we know it's Christmas? How do we know Christmas is coming? How do we know? Somebody give me an answer. What's, okay, decorations, decorations, you know, we, we begin to see uh, decorations, uh, what else, where do we see decorations, the Christmas parade, that's a good one, what else, okay, the news media, where else do we see Christmas, our homes, at church, what about Walmart, Walmart starts, dec- starts uh, telling us it's Christmas time, usually in when? About October or something like that, right? I mean, they start, sometimes in July, they start, uh, you know, putting stuff out. You know, they start kind of putting the trees up somewhere. You can kind of get a view of those where you start thinking in your mind about, you know, wanting uh, to purchase one of those or if you need to purchase one of those or you, the decorations, you know, all those kind of things. You, you get, they start getting these things in the mail, my uh, wife, she gets things from like Kohl's and places like that, you know, special Christmas sales, promotions, and all this kind of stuff, you know, the, um, you know, they, uh, car dealerships or whatever, you start seeing stuff, you know, come, uh, you know, special sale at Christmas, whatever it is. I mean, we know that Christmas is coming uh, for a lot of those reasons and a lot of those things. Um, so good, you, you guys did good. You were, that was very interactive. Thank you for that. A um, couple other things to think about. First thing is this, first question is this. Is there something, is there really something special about Christmas? Does it have significance or meaning more maybe than any other of the holidays? Does it really, does it really, um, there, there's really something about Christmas, isn't it? There's something about, uh, you know, the Christmas uh, season and, 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 and our celebration of, you know, Christmas. It is uh, significant. It is uh, meaningful. Um, and as we think about the first, the, the first Christmas, we think about the, the supernatural significance of Christmas. You know, what God did, right? That's really, that's really what Christmas is about is what God did. True? It really is. It's about what Christmas, that's, about, that's what makes Christmas, uh, again, uh, significant and meaningful to us uh, as, as people, as believers, especially as believers. Now, as I thought about uh, this particular message today, there's a word that uh, you'll be familiar with, uh, and that word is sign, S-I-G-N, sign. Now, uh, today we're going to talk about the signs of Christmas, the signs of Christmas. Now, I hope it will be something that, that is significant to us, reminds us, and calls to our attention and causes us to remember uh, what Christmas is all about, okay? Because we got like six, what, how many, we got just a few days left, six days, right? Five days of shopping at the most, so if you had not got your gifts done, you better be getting on the ball, Okay. Uh, so we're talking about the signs of Christmas. Now, the Greek word for sign in the New Testament is uh, pronounced "samion." Everybody say that, "samion." Okay, that's the Greek word for sign. Now, uh, we're going to talk about, again, the signs of Christmas. So let's find uh, the signs of Christmas today. Uh, stand to your feet as we read from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Everybody say sign. 
Okay. Now, uh, sign, while you're turning to Matthew chapter 1, you're probably already there. If you're there, say amen. Sign in, in the, one of the passages we're going to read today, here's what it means. It is a supernatural indication, a miracle, a token, a wonder. All of those preempted by supernatural. A supernatural indication, a supernatural miracle, a supernatural token, a supernatural wonder is what we're talking about here, okay? Let's read Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name, what's the word? Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. Let's pray. Father, you be glorified today in these next few moments. May we be drawn to you by the power of your Holy Spirit as we share from your word. God, you do a work that only you can do. And God, as we leave in just a few minutes, Lord, uh, may we can all say this has been good to be in your house. But Lord, not only be in your house, but God, to remember the signs of Christmas. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Be seated. So, we're talking about signs today. Now, uh, think about signs. If you see a red sign with the uh, out in traffic or, you know, when you're pulling down the street, you see a red sign that says S-T-O-P on it. What does that mean? So it could mean slow down. I, I've seen a lot of people that do that, brother. They, they do a kind of a rolling stop, but you're supposed to do what? You're supposed to stop. Yeah, you're supposed to come to a complete stop. I think, I think the proper thing is, is that if a police is watching you, your car is kind of actually supposed to do that. You know, when you hit the brakes, it kind of does this, and then it, you know, it's supposed to actually stop moving, Okay. So uh, now, you know, if we see a, 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 we're driving through an intersection and there's a red light up there or there's a stoplight, a traffic light up there, and you see a green light, what does that mean? It means keep going, huh? You know, kick it, whatever, you know, whatever. Not really kick it, but anyway, keep going, you know, that kind of stuff. So signs are things that we see, things that we, uh, that indicate to us a, a red light. A red light means stop, a red sign that says it means to stop. You know, green light means to go, yellow means caution, you know, kind of, that kind of stuff, all those things. We understand that. We understand uh, signs. We, um, you know, we've had a lot of rain, and sometimes when we get a lot of rain, uh, you'll see like our uh, county um, um, employees, they'll get out uh, a lot of times, and they'll put out these signs that says danger, high water. Or don't cross, you know, don't cross water, whatever it might be. Uh, you know, we see all kind of signs that, that get our attention and cause us to, to think about the situation, think about what's going on. Well, in, at Christmas, we see in the Scripture, we see some signs that I believe are important for us to think about at Christmas time because it makes us remember. Or re, you know, we, the, the word remember uh, means to bring to mind or to think on again. Something that, you know, Christmas, uh, when we think of Christmas, we could all think of special times at Christmas. I'm talking about for us as believers today, those, those of us who know Jesus, there, it is a time for us to remember and reflect on the fact that Jesus came, why he came, and what that means for us. That's what Christmas, again, is, is about for us. So uh, that passage I read in Matthew chapter 1 uh, I just did that for your benefit, okay, because we're going to go to Luke now, okay? So you just, just, you know, go over to Luke chapter 2. 
We, we read some of that passage last week and studied some of this passage last week, but we're going to look at something different, okay? Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Now, our first sign is this. We must remember, remember we're talking about the signs of Christmas, the token, the supernatural miracle indication, token wonder uh, of Christmas. Remember the sign of First of all, of the baby in Luke chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Remember we read last week and we've read a couple times already this story about how, the, how the, uh, you know, the shepherds were out. We talked about that last week and how the angels came. Uh, and then there's this sign that they give to the angels. Look at verses 11 and 12. We'll go back up and we'll read verse 10 as well. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Here's the verse, verse 12. And this will be the sign or the token or the indication, a supernatural indication, a miracle, a token, a wonder. Time for you to take notice. Time for you to look. I want you to see this is what God is saying. This is the sign. This is how you'll know that I have showed up and I've done something that is supernatural. I, I, I've brought something to be that is supernatural and you need to take notice of it, is what he's saying. He says, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. See, the angels told the shepherd, and this will be the sign. Again, that supernatural indication what, what God is doing uh, at that time, what, you know, 400 years of silence, all of a sudden there is a sign that God sends to these shepherds. This is what you're, you you want to know that, I, that this is true, what I'm telling you. There's going to be a sign, and you'll find the sign, the token, the miracle, the indication. All you got to do is go to the city of David, to Bethlehem, and you'll find a babe that is there wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Because God wanted them to know that he had just done something that was significant, something that was, that was life-changing, something that was supernatural, something that was an indication or a token for them to see, to know that God loved them. And I'm telling you, Christmas is a time for us to remember and reflect on the fact that God loves us. How do I know God loves me? God loves me because he sent Jesus. He's the gift of Christmas. The sign that God sent from heaven, the sign of the baby is important for us to remember. See, at Christmas, we must reflect on, we must bring to mind, to think on again that the baby Jesus is a supernatural indication, a miracle, a token, a wonder. When God revealed or put on display his great love for us through the birth of his one and only son, Jesus. See, God wanted us to know. He wanted the shepherds to know. And I'm telling you today, he wants us to know. He wants us to know. He wants us to think on it again. He wants us to reflect on it, to dwell on it, to take some time, especially at Christmas, to dwell on the fact that, that God himself came down for us. Remember, reflect on Bring to mind, think on again. How do we remember? What makes us remember? What causes us to remember? We're talking the other day about uh, uh, our kids when they were growing up. Uh, they were exceptional students. They're like their mama. Believe me, it doesn't come from me. Uh, I don't need any amens for that, okay? Uh, thank you for that. But listen, they were exceptional students. They done well. Uh, and And... You know, one of the things that they like to do, they love to do, uh, is they like to do the spelling bees. Remember spelling bees? You know, do that. And, uh, you know, the students would, would uh, they'd get a list of words and they would get to take those home and they would uh, work on those and learn those, memorize them, whatever you want to say, and then have a spelling bee. And they would remember that. And, and how would you do well? Well, you'd do well when you got up there and they said, spell, uh, uh, you know, spot, spot. S P O T. Yay. You done good. You got it. See, and how do they know that? They know that because they 
had memorized and remembered the spelling, the words, the letters, and all those things. How do we celebrate Christmas the way that it needs to be celebrated? It's not, listen, and I, I love Christmas. I love Christmas trees. I love the lights. I love everything about it. I love the presents. I love all the things. I love my grandkids. I love my kids. I love all those things about Christmas. But I'm telling you, the greatest thing, the most significant thing that we can remember is the sign of the baby, that Jesus came. First sign is we remember the sign, remember the sign of the baby. Listen, if you, don't, if you don't remember the sign of the baby, you're really not celebrating Christmas. You're having a big time, all those things, but Christmas is about the baby. It's about the baby. Second sign, remember the sign of the Savior. Remember the sign of of the Savior. You see, the first sign, the sign of the baby, is a, is a, a token or indication of, to remind us of how much God loves us, how He loves us. See, we, we, remember we studied several months ago uh, about uh, the home that God built, and we talked about how sin came into the world and how Adam and Eve, uh, you know, they, they eat the fruit they weren't supposed to eat and there was sin that came in and there was death that came uh, following that, not only physical death, but there was spiritual death that came and man needed a savior. He needed, he needed uh, to, to, to have someone uh, to come and to pay for his sin and to satisfy God's demand for sin and that was death. That was an atonement. And we know that Jesus came and he died on the cross and his blood atoned and was shed for you and for me and for all of mankind. So the sign of the baby is about, we think about that, we think about God's love. The second, th second sign, the sign of the Savior, again in Luke chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Look at verse uh, number 11 of that one. Again, verse 10, do not be a, then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for there is born to you in the city of David a what? A Savior, a Savior. You see, the truth of the matter is we all need a Savior. Every person born on this earth needs a Savior. They need a Savior. We all need a Savior. A Savior is one who uh, is our deliverer, our protector, our healer, uh, the one who makes us whole again, who can bring peace if we accept his, his uh, uh, sacrifice of what he did on the cross, we put our faith and trust in him, then our, our sins can be atoned for and we can be forgiven and we can have eternal life forever with God. The sign of the Savior is for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, a deliverer, a healer, one who makes you whole who is Christ the Lord, the Messiah. And then that word, the Lord, remember we studied the, uh, the Lordship of Christ. We talked about that, and we talked about the word kurios, was the word Lord in the New Testament, which supreme in authority, controller, master, Lord of all. So what the angel is saying to the shepherds there is, is, is there is the Savior, a deliverer, a healer, one who makes you whole, who is Christ the Lord, the Messiah, the, curi the supreme in authority, the controller, the master, the Lord of all. That's who he is. That's who this baby is that has come at Christmas time. He has come for you. And he is all of those things for you. He is your Messiah, the Messiah of promise who was to come and deliver you. He's going to deliver you. Not in the way that they thought from the, from the uh, power of Rome and all the things that were going on, but he's going to deliver them in a spiritual sense in the same way he does for us today. He is the deliverer. He is the Messiah, the supreme and authority, controller, master, Lord of all. That's who Jesus is, that baby in Bethlehem. That's who he is. We need to remember the sign of the Savior. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Hold your place in Luke and then go to Matthew chapter 1 again. Verse 21. The word, the word says in Matthew 1, 21, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Why? For he will save his people. He will save his people from their sins 
The name Jesus is significant. What a beautiful name it is. We just sung it a few minutes ago. The name of Jesus. There's no other name like the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4 says there's no other name given among men by which we must be what? We must be saved. There's no other name we can call upon and be saved. Jesus is the only way. He's the only truth. He's the only life. He's the only way to the Father is Jesus, okay? That's what he said. That's who Jesus is. That's what Christmas is about. Christmas is about when God gave the greatest gift, the only gift that could satisfy the righteous demands that was put forth by the Father. Jesus, the Son, came to satisfy those demands, to live a perfect, sinless life, to die on the cross of Calvary, and in three days rise again. Now he's in heaven, and he's waiting on the Father to say, go get him. And one day, one day, he's going to come again. See, we don't need to just remember the sign of the baby that token, that supernatural indication, that wonder, that miracle from heaven. We also must remember that Jesus came to be the Savior of the world. And by the way, he came for you. He came for you. Luke chapter 1, verse 31 says this. The angel Gabriel is talking to, he's speaking to Mary, and he is telling her, he's informing her that she is going to have the baby Jesus. And he says this, and, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Jesus. Everybody say that word with me. Say that name, Jesus. Say it. One, three. One, three. Everybody say it. Okay. One, two, three. Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. Jesus. Remember the sign. Think on again the sign of the Savior. Not only his love. We talk about the Savior. We're talking about his grace. We're talking about folks like you and me who don't deserve salvation. We don't deserve anything but judgment. We deserve hell, to be honest with you, right? On our best day, we are, we are pathetic and we're depraved and we're all about ourselves. When Jesus came, he came sacrificially. And listen, his life on this earth was not anything about himself, but it was all about you and me and all of us. See, we think about the sign of the, of the baby, and then we think about the sign of the Savior and how, how we understand and know that not only his love is amazing, but his grace towards you and me is overwhelming and undeserving. And then we think about the third and last sign, we remember the sign of the king. Listen, it gets better. It gets better. He's born a baby, yes. He dies a savior. But let me just say this. Look at Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. I know we're, turning, we're moving around a lot. Jot them down, okay, if you don't. You can't keep up. Well, I'll try, I'm trying to go slow. Matthew 2, 1 through 2, the scripture says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Why? For we have seen his star. See, there was a, another miraculous indication, a token, a wonder. There was this star, his star, the star that God put there for the wise men to know, to follow, to come and see the king that was born, king of the Jews. See, the sign of the star, the sign of the king the star guides the wise men to the king of the Jews in Matthew chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. In Luke chapter 1, verses 32 and 33, again, 
Uh, back over there in Luke chapter 1, the scripture says in Luke chapter 1, verses 32 and 33. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. Now again, this is Gabriel, the angel, talking to Mary, his mother. He will be great. He will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Listen, he is a king. He's not only, he did he come as a babe. He was the savior of the world. He's also the king of kings and lord of lords. The angel Gabriel tells Mary of his kingdom, a kingdom that there will be no end of. He'll rule over the throne of his father David. And then go over to Matthew chapter 27. Just a few pages over Matthew chapter 27. Verse number 11. See, now we begin to read the rest of the story. Matthew chapter 27, verse number 11. Now Jesus stood before the governor, before Pilate. And the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Are you the king of the Jews? See, Pilate wanted to un understand about this man Jesus, this man that was being accused of, of basically, uh, you know, he was guilty. The, the religious leaders wanted to crucify him. They had to get rid of him. They had to get rid of Jesus. But Pilate asked the question, he says, listen, are you the king? See, the wise men knew that he was the king. They said, where is he that's been born this baby that's been born, the king of the Jews. We've seen his star. We know he's a king. We know this baby is the king of the Jews. We know that. We've come to find him because we want to go do what? We want to go and worship him. We want to go and give him gifts. We want to bow down before him because he's a king. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And then our last passage in Revelation, Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. See, Christmas is more than about a baby being born. Christmas is more than just thinking about the fact that Jesus loves us, that his mercy and his grace has been extended to us and continues to be extended to us. In Revelation chapter 19, being in verse number 11, John is writing, now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one except, knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations. And listen, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe... And on his thigh, a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. King of kings and Lord of lords. See, the signs of Christmas, the sign of the baby, sign of the baby to the shepherds, go this is how you'll know. This is my indication. This is my token. This is my miracle. You'll find a baby. 
and he's going to be wrapped in cloths, swaddling cloths, and his going to be his head's going to be laid in a feeding trough. Just go look, go look, you'll find him. And then we see the sign of the Savior, a Savior, a Deliverer, a Healer, one who makes you whole, the Messiah. The Lord of all. And then we see the sign of the king. The wise men were guided by the star. That special indication in the sky that brought them to the Savior, to the baby. Mary, the angel Gabriel says, listen, he's going to have a kingdom. And his kingdom is never going to end. And then Pilate asked him, says, are you the king of the Jews? And then Revelation 19, verses 11 through 16, verse 16 especially tells us that one day he's coming back. See, he's come, he, he come the first time. He was a king, but he was a baby. He lived, he died, he rose again, and now he's in heaven. But today we see in Revelation 19, he's also not only, he, he came and now he's going to be the return. He's coming again one day. So the, the thing for us is this about Christmas. See, Christmas is significant for us, especially if we're believers, because we know that Jesus came. We know he came. And we know why he came. He came for us. And we know he's coming again. And we can praise, we can amen and praise the Lord for that because we know that when he comes again or when he, when he steps out in the clouds and, he, and you know, the, the rapture takes place and we're drawn up to meet him in the air and so we'll ever be with the Lord. We know all that and we praise the Lord for that. But some people in this room today maybe can't celebrate that and can't know, don't know that because you haven't experienced the signs of Christmas. You haven't experienced the baby that came. You haven't experienced the Savior that came. And you haven't experienced the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But today you can. Today you can come to know him. Today he... He longs for you to have fellowship and relationship with him. That's why he came. Let's pray together, okay? Father, you're awesome and you're good. And Lord, today we, we remember the signs of Christmas. We remember that you sent your son, Jesus Christ. We know that he was born in Bethlehem. We know that he lived a perfect, sinless life. We know that he loved and done many miracles on this earth, touched and healed people, loved people. And then, God, we know that he died on the cross. And we know in three days he rose in power. And we know one day he's coming back. And, Lord, he's not coming back defeated. He's not coming back crucified. He's coming back as King of kings and Lord of lords. And the truth of the matter is this, we're either ready and we know him or we need to know him because we all need a Savior. So God, I pray today for these next few moments, this invitation, this opportunity for us. God, it's not mine, it's not this church's, but God, it's your invitation, your extension of your hands to say, come to me. Come to me, I love you. Come to me, I've provided the way. Come to me, Jesus gave his life for you. Come to me. And I'll give you rest. Come to me and I'll give you peace. Come to me and I'll give you joy. Come to me and I'll give you life eternal. God, help us today, all of us in this room, to truly experience Christmas and the Christ who is the reason that we celebrate. For it's in his name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's stand.